Make sure you follow me on social media to get updates and ask me questions. Enjoy the video! Now that we can successfully create and show items, I want to do something totally different, but it will be very important for the upcoming videos. So later in the course we will see how we can build a shopping cart to buy products, but for now let's keep things simple. I will start by changing the products table a bit. For now we do not have available the owner of the product. So let me open the products table. And I will use a foreign key that will point to the users table. So table integer user underscore id. With that in place we have to go back to the model factory and change the model factory for the products. We have to include the user id now. Now the problem to this is that I have to use a real user id, so an id that exists in the users table. Now this is easy to do but we have to follow some rules otherwise we will get errors. So first I will show you how to access a random user ID. All you have to do is to access the model, the user model, and then you say all, and then you call the random function, and you want to fetch the ID. However, as I said, for this to work you have to follow an important rule. So in the database seeder, the factory that creates 10 users should be called before the product factory. The reason is because the product factory depends on the user's factory. So if we refresh and migrate again and see the database, so PHP artisan, migrate, refresh, refresh, and then seed. Okay, I get this error. Uh, this is something related to... Because I use two different versions for my projects, and they both use the same database, the view Laravel database, I get this error because I have one project that I do my testing before I record the video, and I have a different project, which is this one that you can see right here, which is used to record the current video. And because both of them are using the same database, whenever I change something, I get that error. So my solution to this is to drop all the tables. But in your case, I guess you do not have this error because you just have one project. So let me do this again. All right. Structure, products, and we have the user ID now. So this worked. However, if we change the order in the database seeder, so I create the users after we create the products, well, this will not work. So here it says that we are requesting one item, but there are zero items in the collection. So yeah, the error is very clear. Because we are trying to access a random user ID, but we do not have any user in the table. So hopefully this makes sense. So let me bring this back. And I will run again the command just to be safe. Okay. So with this in place, we can now find out the owner of the product. At this point, we need a relationship, but I will not create it yet. So for now, let's head back to the Vue.js application. So to be able to continue with our application and implement more difficult functionalities, we need to store the authenticated user. So the authentication package that we created is missing a very important piece. So we have set token, get token, destroy token, and is authenticated. However, we need also the authenticated user. Now, there is a bunch of different ways that you can store the authenticated user. As I said, you can have a function here to do that. You can also use Vuex, which is something that we will learn in a different course. You can even use the local storage, which I think it is a very bad idea, but you can still do that. So since Vuex will be taught in a different course and the local storage is a bad practice, let's create two functions here. Set authenticated user and get authenticated user. We also need a variable here. So let authenticated user. Okay, and this will be an empty object. All right, so the purpose of set and get is very simple. Set will accept some data 
and we will use the data to set the authenticated user, which is this variable right here, this object. Then get what we'll do is to return the authenticated user. Very simple, just setters and getters. Okay, now for all of you out there that know what view X is, you notice that the way we are storing and getting the user is very similar to how Vuex does it. So the reason why I'm not using Vuex here is because we need a good understanding of the view library before we use Vuex. Anyway, now in the navbar component, we need to set the user. So Laravel has inside the API route file, it has an endpoint for this. So this endpoint will return the authenticated user. So all we have to do is to make a get request to this endpoint and set the authenticated user. So I will create a method and I will call this set authenticated user. And we will send a get request to that endpoint. So this http.get API user. So this is the endpoint. So after we send the request, we will get a response back. So I will use the new function that we have in the in the package, which is this function here, set authenticated user. So this dot auth dot set authenticated user, and I will pass the response body. So this will set the user and to double check that the user is set, the authenticated user, I will console.log this of get authenticated user, which is this function right here, the other one. Okay. Now, of course, for this to work, we have to call this inside the created hook. So this set authenticated user. All right, let's run this to see what we get. So as you can see here, I am not authenticated. And before I actually try to authenticate, we need to set the, the new client secret in the application. So PHP artisan passport install. And I will get the client secret for the password to grant client. And back to the view application, inside the login component this time, change the client secret. Okay. I will go back to the database. I will go to view Laravel is my database, users the table, and I will grab this email. Okay, the password is secret, login. I will refresh, and this should log the authenticated user. And every time we refresh, we get the authenticated user. Because remember, this uh, set authenticated user function is called in the created hook of the navbar. So you get the idea here. Okay, so now because the next video will be about deleting products from the array dynamically, what I will do is to print the ID of the owner for each product. Remember that now a product has a user ID as well. So if I open the product.view file, right here, I will print the ID. So product.userID. If we go back, we should have the ID right here, and we do. So 8, 3, 2, etc., etc. So this is the user ID of the, for the product. So the products with ID 1 are products that correspond to the authenticated user. Do we have any? Uh, we should have, yes, we have one here, another one here, another one here. Okay, so we have a couple. So now that we have the authenticated user stored and the user ID for each product, we can delete, edit and buy products. So all of that in the upcoming videos.